Hello, I'm Jerry Middleton, and today we're going to have table talk. We're going to talk about scores, timers, shot clock, and announcers. Uh, real quick on the scores for timeouts. Uh, each team gets seven timeouts. Now, hopefully, you have watched the timeout video that I did, um, the scores and the timers. So, hopefully that has happened. If not, you need to get with somebody and get that. And so you can watch it. It will help you out immensely. Remember, numbers not in the book or incorrect numbers are not technical fouls. Uh, those should just be changed. Uh, and on a separate piece of paper, make a notation of what had happened so that the crew chief at the end of the game uh, on his game report can turn that in. And the same with names that are not on there. Uh, that's another issue. Um, there should be an active roster. You should have that active roster. And only the names on that active roster are allowed to play. If someone comes up, they're not on that uh, active roster, then we need to get clarification from the league office prior to that person participating in the game. Uh, another thing to remember, offensive fouls do not count toward uh, team totals. They do count as personal, but not team. And offensive fouls would be, in better words, a player control foul and an illegal screen. Those would be the two most common and obvious ones that uh, you're going to have, and those are offensive fouls. Texts are not personal fouls, nor do they count toward the team total as part of the five to shoot penalty. They do not count toward that. Um, however, on a separate piece of paper, you want to write down the technical, and you want to put on there the quarter, the time, the player number, the name, and that's all you really need to have. And have that available to the officials for after the game. And also, if you have a flagrant, you want to write that down too so that the officials uh, can get that game report filled out properly. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to write down who won the toss. The reason being is if white wins the toss, then blue gets it to start second and third period, and white gets it to start to fourth. Uh, also remember, D3's, defensive three seconds, does not count towards the um, six, or not six, but doesn't count toward the uh, a player's uh, or anything. You know, that, out of fact, it's not, it's not an unsporting technical foul. Unsporting technical fouls are what we want to write down. So basically, that's it for the score. I mean, it's pretty simple um, with everything. Now, the timer. The timer should have a stopwatch handy. Now, a cell phone would work, but preferably a stopwatch, because you never know when the clocks might go out or the shot clock may go down. Uh, these things happen uh, by nobody's fault, they just happen. So make sure we have that. Now, the clock should start when the ball is legally touched. And what I refer to that is, and that's either by offense or the defense, the clock starts, not on possession. It's the offense or defense touches the ball, the clock should start. Now, the only exception to that would be a kick ball on the inbounds pass. The clock should not start because obviously that is a violation and the ball is not legally touched. Uh, on the scoreboard, <coughs> excuse me, stop counting fouls on the board once it hits five. Now I know that some of the scoreboards you have to put the foul in and it will automatically kick it up. And if that happens, we understand uh, just go ahead and minus it, minus the uh, team fouls down back to five. There's a pretty common situation for that in a lot of places. 
Um, the other thing is uh, the team first foul in the last two minutes of the game. So let's say that the team only has two fouls. And in the last two minutes of a period, um, they commit their third foul, let's say, to, at 1.59 on the clock. And they commit their uh, third foul. Well, the official should come over and say that foul's on 22. And that's first in the last two. Bump my team fouls to four. That way we know as the officials and everybody else that the next foul will be shooting the penalty of two shots. So that would be wonderful to do that. Um, now, the other thing that's a big confusion here is the clock should stop on all made baskets in the last minute of periods one, two, and three. And then stop on all made baskets in the fourth period or in the last two minutes of the overtime in the last two minutes is when it should stop on those. In the fourth period and last two minutes of overtime, the clock should stop on all made baskets. That's a big deal. Um, subs. Subs is an interesting situation because by pro basketball rules, a turnover in the front court, i.e. the new back court, uh, no subs are allowed unless they're at the table. So to keep confusion down, it's probably best not to blow the horn uh, on those situations and let the referees just take care of it. Now, if we're in the half court and the offense is retaining possession of the basketball, then obviously a horn would be great. Or a substitution before the last uh, free throw uh, that we're going to play off of. Uh, so for shooting two shots between free throws one and two, they can sub. Now, after that, they cannot sub on after the second free throw, after a made free throw that we're going to play off of. Um, there's no substitutions. Now, on timeouts, if, it, if a team does not do promotions, and there are some out there, and there are teams that do promotions. So there's two sort of different looks at this. Uh, if you're not doing promotions, the timeouts are 75 seconds. Um, and so we want to have a horn at the uh, 15 seconds remaining, and then obviously at the zero. Uh, so we can get the teams out and get the ball game going. If they're running um, these promotions, you know, having the kids out there shooting free throws or something like that. Those want to be two minutes and 30 seconds. So we want a horn at 2.15 two and then a horn when it's at 2.30 or zero, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, now, if the promotion is done early, we can go earlier. But we don't want to rush the promotion. That's part of the show, part of the game. Um, overtime is five minutes. Each team gets two timeouts, and they shoot the penalty on the fourth foul in overtime. Now, shot clock. The only time the shot clock starts on the touch is when the ball is inbounded, and again, that is by either the offense or the defense. So if somebody's passing the ball in, the guy jumps up and tips it, that shot clock starts. It's not on possession on a throw-in. Now, all other times, it's possession. So a rebound goes possession, start. Jump ball, possession, start. So at the start of the game, the game clock might read 158 or 158, 1158, and the shot clock is just starting because the ball's been batted around. No one's really gained possession of the ball. So it doesn't start on the touch on that. It starts on possession. And the same with the steal. It starts on possession. What's possession? Well, I hold the ball. I dribble the basketball. Those are all possessions. Um, with that. Now, 
Uh, the shot clock should be reset to 14 any time the ball hits the rim. Now that's intentionally or unintentionally. If the ball hits the rim, it goes to 14. Now, another question has been asked, what if the shot clock's at 21 and they shoot the ball and it hits the rim, does it go to 14? Yes, it goes to 14. Um, now, obviously, if the offense rebounds, then it's 14 we play. If the defense gets it, then it resets to 24. Now, on free throws, it's best to set the clock, the shot clock, at 14 seconds. Reason being is because, basically, if the offense gets it, you're not sitting there trying to hit the button and reset it, so you're able to go a much quicker on that 14. Now, if the defense gets it, not a big deal. Um, you just click the 24 and go on. And the bigger deal is if it goes through as a good basket and they're going to take it out of bounds, then 24 is real easy to set and go. All right? Um, Ball's deflected out of bounds. That's a big deal uh, because it seems like the, the shot clock operators want to be real quick to reset. You can be as slow as slow can be because you're going to have five or six seconds. And so a ball's just deflected out of bounds. It's going to stay where it is. So if it's deflected out of bounds at 20 seconds, it's going to stay at 20 seconds. It's not going to change. So it, it, it's easy, as long as the offense is retaining possession of the ball. The uh, shot clock will never change on a deflection out of bounds unless it's a new possession. Uh, that's easy. Um, the shot clock is reset to 24 on fouls and kick balls in the backcourt. Again, fouls and kick balls in the backcourt it will reset to 24 seconds. Now, in the front court, if it's above 14 seconds and we have a foul or a kick ball, it will stay there. If it's below 14 seconds, we have a foul and a kick ball or a kick ball, then it will go back up to 14. And the officials will probably signal 14 to you and just click back and we'll go. Um, jump balls. Jump balls is the, is the crazy one. Now, let's say, for instance, we have a jump ball with five seconds to go. And um, so that shot clock is going to stay at five. And we're going to have the toss. Now, the game clock will start on the tip, but the shot clock will not start until possession. So, for if the offense gains possession of the basketball, then that five seconds is all they have. If the defense gets it, not a big deal. New 24, and on we go the other direction. Uh, all right. Now, here's the other one. Announcer. Announcer, you can make or break a game. You're very important to this game. Um, the following is mandatory for the announcer to announce. And announce last two minutes in every period, not the last minute, last two minutes. And all you need to say is two minutes, two minutes remaining. Okay, that's easy. Or you can embellish a little bit, whatever, how you want to do it. Now, the other one is we talked about just a little bit ago, first foul in the last two minutes. The official is going to come over and say, did that foul. First in the last two, and you should announce that it's first in the last two, first foul in the last two minutes. That's all you got to do. Uh, if a team gets a delay of game warning, you can say delay of game warning, Kalamazoo. All right? Uh, that's all you need to do there. When a player fouls out, uh, it's nothing more than the 
player X has his sixth foul and has been disqualified from the game or something to that effect. Again, be professional. Uh, a player or coach is ejected. Again, be professional when you do this. You know, we don't want, because you can stir up more problems or you can make things a lot calmer. So just be professional with that as, well, most of, of all of you are. And then the other one would be the referee's calling away from the play foul. That you need to say, and away from the play foul has been called. And another one now is a new one this year is the uh, transition take foul, or the TTF as the abbreviation is. And that's another one. The referee's going to say that's a transition take foul. And you should say, a transition take foul has been called, or ever however you want to word it. And then the last one that you want to make sure you announce is if they have a clear path foul. And again, you know, a clear path foul has been called. So I'm hoping that, that this has helped everybody because the one thing you have to remember is you're part of the officiating crew. And we need your help as much as you need our help, that you know what's going on and we know what's going on. Well, I understand things happen, mistakes happen, referees make mistakes, and the table people make mistakes, but we're a team, and so let's be a team. And we're trying to make this work for everybody, and we want the league to prosper and survive, and the way that happens is everybody being professional. So if you have any questions, jmiddleton at nws.k12.in.us. And I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, you know what? Good basketball. Have fun.